Well, if you've been following uh, our prayer direction during 40 days of power, and I suppose all of you are, um, we take time to plan what we should be focusing on. So if you look at the way our prayer goes and the devotion goes, it's all aligned. And so the past week, we've been talking about breaking limitations or breaking barriers in, in our lives. And we looked at different scripture verses. Uh, our prayer has been focused that way. Uh, in my word to go, I have been teaching on breaking limitations. So I just want to go to one of the devotions I did this week on Wednesday. I, I spoke from Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6 to 9. Uh, well, I did 6 and 7, but for my exhortation today, I'll do 6 to 9. And we are going to be praying uh, today. We want to focus our prayer on every assignment or project of ours that has come to stagnation. If, there, if you're doing anything or you're, any part of your life that has come to stagnation, today we're going to push it forward. Amen? And God is going to break every limitation. Zechariah chapter 4 verse, from verse 6. So he answered and said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel you shall become a plain, and he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple. His hands shall also finish it. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. Amen. Now, the, the prophecy uh, is given by Zachariah to a man called Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel was one of the first leaders of Israel, or of particularly of Judah, who were returning from Babylon, from captivity. After 70 years of captivity, he led the group that is going back. His name, Zerubbabel, means son of Babylon. Basically, it means born in Babylon. So he is a, a person who was born in captivity. He had not lived in Jerusalem before the captivity. He was born into captivity. But then God gave them freedom to return. So they are returning from captivity, from Babylon and Assyria and, and Persia. And they are coming in to rebuild the nation. And, and, and Zerubbabel's group had a main task. And their task is to rebuild the temple. When Nebuchadnezzar attacked Judea or Judah, uh, he, he destroyed the temple and took away all the sacred things in the temple. So Zerubbabel and his people decided, we're going to build the temple. And we're going to build the city of Jerusalem. Now you have to imagine, these are people who have come from captivity. They are very poor people. They don't have anything. And the land has nothing. They went to meet the people who were in the land called the remnant. They didn't go into captivity, but they are worse than those who came. Because for years, the land has lied fallow, wasted. And so they're trying to build something that is very difficult. And Zerubbabel is assisted by the high priest at the time. His name is Joshua. But God also raised prophets for Israel at that time. And one of them is Zechariah, whom we read about. The other prophet is a man called Haggai. So there are two prophets, Haggai and Zechariah, who are speaking into the project. And then there is Zerubbabel and Joshua who are building the, prophet, uh, the, the project. So there is spiritual declaration at the top, but there is physical action by Zerubbabel uh, down there. Now, the project at this time has come to a halt because they don't have money 
and people are opposing them. Uh, they don't want the, 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 the temple to be built. Even some of their own people are against the rebuilding of the temple. I don't know who is against what you are doing, but you will push through. Somebody say you will push through. So it is at this point that the word of the Lord came to Zerubbabel. God spoke to Zerubbabel. And uh, there are three components of the word that I will just draw your attention to quickly. And then we will pray. Verse 6. He says, so he answered and said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. It's not going to take your effort. It's not going to take your physical action. It's not even going to take your mental ability. But this is the work of the Spirit of God. I came to announce to somebody who is struggling. You have come to the end and nothing is working. You've pushed hard. You've struggled. You've cried. God says to you, this one, not by might, nor by power, but by my Spirit says the Lord of hosts. The Spirit of God executes the Word of God. What God says by His mouth, He achieves by His Spirit. What God says by His Word, He achieves by His Spirit. So what God is saying to Zerubbabel, there is no physical force on earth that can help you. There's nothing you can do physically about this situation. You've come to the end of your physical endeavor. You've done all you can do naturally. But this one is going to move. But it's not going to be by power or by might. But by my spirit. There are things that our power can move. There are things that our might can move. And there are things that only the Spirit of God will move. And this morning we are trusting that the things our might and power cannot move, the Holy Spirit will move out of the way. Something is going to move in your life. So that is the first word that comes to Zerubbabel. Not by might, nor by power, but by my Spirit. Then, a second word comes to him in verse 7. Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain. And he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. It's a word of defiance. Who are you, O great mountain? They call the problem a mountain. Why is it a mountain? Because it's a big obstruction. I don't know what mountain is standing before you. But you are going to ask that mountain a question of defiance. Who are you, O oh mountain? Who are you, O oh poverty? Who are you, this sickness? Who are you, this problem? Who, who do you think you are? When God speaks, who are you? When the Spirit of God is moving, who are you? It's a question of defiance. And then he says, before Zerubbabel, before this returnee refugee, this mountain will become a plain. Before you, the mountain will become a plain. Before you, before your own eyes, you would see it. That which was a mountain, that which stood tall, that which you couldn't move with your own eyes, you will see it become a plain. That means the mountain is going to move. The problem is going to shift. And this morning we're going to trust God for shifting of problems. And then he said, 
Zerubbabel shall bring the capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. This is Zerubbabel who is stagnated. He can't move. But the word to Zerubbabel is you will bring the capstone. What is the capstone? The capstone in those days is the final stone you place on a project to declare that the project is completed. So when you build a building, you finish the building, you go and bring the capstone, you put the capstone there and everybody shouts, yeah, it's finished, congratulations. So the prophecy says Zerubbabel is going to bring the capstone. And when he puts the capstone on the temple, the people shall shout, grace, grace to it. Favor, favor, favor is what is going to bring the capstone. So what God is saying to Zerubbabel, now it's stagnated, but you will finish it. And then the third word that came to Zerubbabel, verse 8. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple. His hands shall also finish it. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple. His hands shall also finish it. The hand that laid the foundation will also finish it. These words were spoken to Zerubbabel by the same God we worship. My name is not Zerubbabel. I am Mensa Anamua Otabel. But the God of Zerubbabel is my God. The God who spoke to Zachariah is my God. So although I am not Zerubbabel, I have his God. And he is a God who never changes. What he did yesterday, he can do today. And what he does today, he will do tomorrow. So we connect to the God who spoke to Zerubbabel. Although we are not him, the God of Zerubbabel is still our God. And this morning, this same God who spoke to a refugee, Returnee, whose project had come to a standstill, is speaking to somebody here at Christ Temple East. And he's saying to you, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. He says, this mountain will be moved and become a plain. And he says to you, you will establish the capstone over that project. And he says to you, the same hand that laid the foundation shall also accomplish it. This morning, we want to activate our faith. Activate our faith. Because there are things in our lives that must be completed. They must be done. God spoke to you about it. You started in faith. And the enemy has come against it. But this morning, the mountain shall move. The mountain shall move. The mountain shall move. In the name of Jesus. Not by might. Nor by power. But by my spirit. Lift up your hands to heaven. And begin to talk to the Holy Spirit of God. The Spirit of God who executes the word of God. You who takes the word of God and executes it. Oh wind of the spirit. Oh breath of God. Oh wind of the spirit. Oh breath of God. Oh fire of God. Maka idebo sekaya. Move on behalf of your people. Move on behalf of your people. Oh breath of God. Oh breath of God. Move on behalf of your people. Oh spirit of God. Move on behalf of your people. Oh wind of God. Move on behalf of your people. Oh talk to the Holy Spirit. He is the mover. He is the shaker. He is the mover. He is the shaker.
the Holy Spirit is the one who moves and shakes situations this morning there's going to be a moving there's coming a shaking there's coming a shaking there's coming a moving there's coming a shaking there's coming a moving there's coming a shaking hey it has been there for a long time but it will move 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 it is moving it is moving the mountain is moving in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus who are you oh great mountain who are you oh great mountain who are you oh this sickness who are you defy the problem don't accept it don't tolerate it who are you talk to your problem talk to the situation who are you who are you to defy the spirit of God oh push it push it push it push it push it who are you you have harassed the people of God for too long you have stood in our way for too long you have made us unhappy for too long you have made us sad for too long who are you O oh great mountain how dare you stand before God how dare you stand before the people of God oh yes yes we defy the mountain we defy the problem oh pray 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 don't joke with this don't allow it in your way don't let it stand in your way don't let it frustrate you kaya sito kaya mikatori ikizaniata fora Stovari ikaziona ichikataya Metufari izagiana kuta Sifaranda sokochei vakasiana Who are you O mountain Before ICGC you will become a plane Before God's people you will become a plane With our own eyes we will see Yes, it is moving. This mountain shall be removed. The name of Jesus. This mountain shall be removed by my spirit. Says the Lord.
Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mountain move. Mountain move. Mountain move. And the Lord said, You will bring the capstone. The final is going to happen. The project will be accomplished. What you started, it will be done. You will not be left midway. You will not be abandoned in the middle of the road. And he says, when the capstone comes, the people will declare grace, grace, grace to it. We are going to all declare grace this morning. I don't know what it is, but as we declare grace, we are bringing completion to the assignment. As we declare grace, we are seeing finality. As we declare grace, we are declaring God's favor to perfect what we have declared. We're going to say grace 12 times, 12 times, 12 times, 12 times. We declare grace, grace, grace. Let's start saying grace. to yourself you're going to look at your hands and you will say this hands that began will also finish it just declare to your hands by that you are declaring to yourself you are declaring to your spirit you are declaring to your soul you are declaring to your body by these hands by these hands by these hands the Lord will complete it up those hands to the Lord by every outstretched arm representing people of God by your outstretched arm that represents your faith your endeavor your project your assignment by these hands God will bring you victory by these hands the Lord will bring deliverance by these hands you will accomplish what you started by these hands you will not stop halfway you will not be a disgrace you will not be a reproach people will not say he started and it didn't end but you start and you will perfect it you start and you will perfect it you will not go halfway. You will go through to the end. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I speak to your hands. I speak to your life. Not by mind. Not by power. But by the Spirit of God. This mountain is out of the way. The capstone is set in place. By your hands there is victory. In 
Jesus name and if you truly believe that you're going to rejoice you're going to rejoice just lead us to rejoice Pastor Edwin oh yes somebody shout 